for me, you know, my work is just involved in beauty. I want to make work so beautiful it hurts. That's always been my goal. What motivated me is some run something like this, and this is loose, loose truth, you know. Um, I started to read pretty early. I felt very alien to my family. I don't know why, but I felt separate. I don't find my freedom. I was born free. I mean, it's just that's why I was a alien in my family because they weren't. <laughs> my father was. My father was like me. What I started to say was like I read, you know, and, and that sort of kept me alive. Really, I was sick a lot as a kid, so it literally kept me alive. And then my mother, who was English, was showing me watercolors because that's what you know, fancy English women children did was they learned watercolors. So she was showing me how to use watercolors, and I did something, and I, rem I, c I can remember still what it looks like. Uh, it was, you know, a, a big yellow patch with a kind of a blue moon around it, you know, and it suddenly, within an instant, replaced the full meaning that books had had to me for that, up to that day. Because what I did looked back at me. I looked at it and then it looked back at me. And that's always been my criteria to know when a work is finished. I no longer look at it, it looks at me. Well, I have to backtrack a bit. Um, the thing about Max Day, my math teacher at Black Mountain was that he was totally visual. He also had a grand sense of twinkle humor. I'd had lunch with Max Dane and, and Charles also and some other people and afterward Max said I want you to take my, I must have said something although I was very very um, you know well brought up and didn't talk and all that stuff. I went into the class and I said to Max, I said, I have no training for this. I have no background, none. I can't do this. He said, I'll give you a background. And we began, as I've said many times, we started these walks and he explained mathematics and nature. And, and you know, within, he also gave me books. Now, I'm a worker. That's just my nature. <laughs> so he gave me these books and, you know, I read them and did the, did the, problems and, you know, taught myself a lot of stuff. I didn't have uh, much calculus or anything like that. I taught myself all of, trig, calculus, all of that stuff through Max's books that he gave me. But they were easy to understand, as was Max. You know, great teachers, he makes the most complex concepts totally available to you. I don't know how he does it. It interested me one thing is that it was, he was always doing cosmology, but I didn't know that at the time. Um, somehow or other, the way Max taught made me understand my little tiny self in this big multiverse. Well, I, I teach myself in the studio, and you know, I have uh, assistants who I pay, but it, it's also a training. And I think, and I'm a very good teacher, and I think the way that works is you become very intuitive about the person and how to help them, you know, and you try to uh, not have them look at problems, but have them look at answers, you know, and to imbue them with the idea that any problem is solvable, any problem. Let me tell you something. I was there in the, when I came in the fall, so I was with the winter teachers, not the, you know, the New York guys. I got there, I was exhausted. I got sick right away, went to bed for two weeks. Then I got up and I did some painting and I had a tutorial with the then painting teacher and he said to me, and he was a sweet, lovely man. He said to me, it's a good job 
you're a woman because you'll get married and have, this is Black Mountain, you'll, you'll have children because you have absolutely no talent. Imagine the first tutorial at Black Mountain. Mm -hmm. So I got sick and went to bed for two weeks. <laughs> and then I uh, changed painting teachers. <laughs> I didn't do painting. I went to somebody who was doing a kind of performance art, a light sound move. It was kind of Schlemmer, re recreation of Schlemmer. Yeah. When I left Black Mountain and I came to New York, of course, I was raising and supporting a child and having a, you know, a million jobs at once and all that, and paint, trying to paint three hours at least, you know, from like 10 to 1 in the morning or something like that, 2 in the morning. Um, and I was doing post-student work. And I meant to be doing post-student work. I was trying to find out who Morris Lewis was. And as, as Chuck Close once said when he met de Kooning, he said, it's nice to meet the man who did more de Koonings than I did. <laughs> you know, that's like, that's, that's what you're supposed to be doing when you're 22, 3, 4 or so. And you're not supposed to be showing your work and in the field because you don't have enough information on any level. You just don't have it. So I did I did that, and then when I was finished with what I considered my post didn't work, um, I thought, well, I don't want to do that anymore because now I've done it, and I don't know what to do in art. I don't, you know, I, I don't see what the next step is. So I danced. I joined Judson, Judson, well, Judson Hunt Theater asked me to join them. And, uh, you know, so I danced for a few years, and it was a really interesting experience because uh, yeah, a lot of a lot of art is about uh, reconfigurating the rules. In other words, breaking the rules, and just by the nature of that, making new rules, right? And, and Judson Datsu, those people were throwing the truck over the cliff every minute of the day. <laughs> it was great. Yvonne Rader and Trish Brown and Steve Paxton and you know Bob Morris and all those people. They were most of the, a lot of them were artists. Some of them were untrained dancers. I was a trained dancer, but I didn't tell anybody that because you weren't supposed to be a trained dancer if you were there. And I was interested in that. I was interested in breaking my rule, the rules myself because the world was dominated at that time by white male, you know, insecure macho artists. <laughs> and I just thought, you know, even when I was at Black Mountain, I thought, I am strong, and I am smart, and I am, goddammit, I'm a female. And I'm going to do strong woman's art. Wherever I lived, I had a, a table set up. And I worked at least one night a week doing math. Now, I've always liked to do things I don't know how to do. Read books I don't understand, you know, because something strikes. I don't want to do know what I know, you know. I don't want to read for comfort level. I, don't, you know, my comfort level is, is to be where I don't know anything. I was on the dance floor at Judson, and I hadn't been working in the studio at all. But I was reading a lot about set theory which Max had taught in group theory and all of that. And I was on the dance floor, and I suddenly saw what to do. After all, I could have made a little tin model and took it, taken it to a fabricator and made it look like macho work, like the guys were doing, you know? Uh, you know, and I, I just, I'm so stubborn <laughs> about things like this. I'm stubborn about the truth. I, suddenly saw rolls of paper and how set theory would go together done this way, I left the stage and never went back. And the next morning I started in my studio. You know, this is an experiential aspect of my work. I don't, I don't really de make decisions that are made for me, for instance. The bucket, there were two buckets and three buckets, and one bucket was on the floor and another bucket upside down on it. And, uh, and I knew something was wrong. 
and I couldn't figure out, I just knew from the feel of it, it wasn't, it didn't, you know, and a lot of feeling is sexual. And I didn't get the right feeling from it. And I, and I often dream of solutions. In my dream, I put the bucket on wheels. So, you know, who knows how any of that, you know, I mean, I, I'm a born artist. As most of us are, really, it gets kicked out of you, and I didn't let them kick it out of me. But you know, I just—it's just—it's in every being an artist is it every fiber of me, and it all came about through different ways. You know, I skied in my, in Canada, and I learned to draw from skiing. I could always draw, but I really learned the big scope of drawing from skiing through new snow and. The primary thing I, I wanted was freedom and experience. You know, one of the great things in my life was having a child. That was just amazing. And still is, every day. Every artwork I do transforms me. I'm not the same way well, you must have the same experience. I'm not the same person after the work is complete. And one work always opens up into the other. I don't like metaphors. My work is not a metaphor, nor are the materials. I'm talking big stuff. How is the universe created? <laughs> I want to be part of that. I don't want to fiddle with small stuff. <laughs> I, I just don't have any patience for small stuff. You know, uh, you know, like that's why ambition seems paltry, doesn't it? I mean, what a low, what a low goal! <laughs> you know, you're given this life. You know, you're given all these assets. What a low goal! That, that stuff is, I think. Don't you? <laughs> <laughs>